It's pretty crazy. Another morning, another two game. Okay, so the 86 hood is gone and the boxes. We managed to stretch the seats out. It's still not that comfy because it's actually worse. It's actually worse. These stick into your ribs. How are you, Ruben? Stiff. Not like an erection, but. Casa del Alfard on the side of the mountain. It looks so big back there. So we just stayed on the. I decided up the road here. Again? Again. No way, you're crazy. We just love Japan uh, domestic market. Is that Game of Thrones or something? Oh, there's some music. Yeah, it's fairly intense. There's always music. It was uh, pretty tranquil here. It still is. It's a, kind of a beautiful area, but uh, there's just Eurobeat or something just playing incredibly loudly in the distance. We were, uh, you know, we were a little bit curious to see maybe out by the coast where the tsunami had hit in 2011 because like obviously that was a unbelievable natural disaster and it was probably one of the worst disasters of, all, of, of our lifetime and we were just a bit curious so we decided to drive out towards Sendai and uh, Soma and areas like that just to see like what they were doing like what was a uh, you know what was going on out there had they restored were they building storm walls and stuff we were just fascinated we wanted to go and see that stuff in 2016 and uh, not just like disaster porn just to see it for the sake of it but it just seemed like such an unbelievable tragedy that I wanted to just go to the, where it happened just to see it for ourselves and driving out to the coast pretty quickly you could see like that there was nothing left. Pretty crazy. It was like 33 degrees out. It was a gorgeous day, and the ocean was super calm. Like you would never ever think that that would happen in that area, and that's what made it a little bit more chilling to experience that. We climbed up to have a look at a cliff, and um, you could see where the waves had come up over and stripped all the trees. It was like. How high up are we? It was unbelievable. Seeing the walls and all the stuff they've built now, like it's probably not going to withstand anything. But a lot of people have relocated from the coast. We've seen where all city streets used to be and stuff, but now it's all solar farms and stuff. I'm sure a lot of people will never return to that area, but to see that that's where the water line had actually come up and devastated the area. We went up to some of the local ports that were completely decimated by the tsunami. And watch some of the videos to see where it come in around and oh my god like I'm, it was just one of those things that we we kind of wanted to see it but then when we actually saw it just the, there was an overwhelming sadness on all three of us to see just how bad and how how horrible that situation must have been for locals i mean just to be there on a nice warm day where it's like 30 something degrees and you want to go for a swim in the in the ocean and then to to have known what had happened there yeah 
definitely um yeah definitely a weird experience we decided then to um work our way down back down the coast we were going to go and uh, check out n style and other places that were further down so we typed into google maps uh, the fastest route without tolls and we didn't realize that the exclusion zone is actually you can drive down highway 6 or route 6 as it's called which brings you right through the fukushima daiichi uh, disaster area we suddenly realized that we were not too far away from minami soma which was the start of the the exclusion zone that we wouldn't have been allowed into in 2016. But they've actually opened up all the, the roads and we drove down to towns like Naomi, Tomioka and uh, Futaba and all these places and um, yeah once again we were absolutely wiped out of it. Like we did not think that Google Maps was going to bring us down through the worst nuclear disaster in like over 30 years. So we just kept driving down the road it was so eerie just everywhere overgrown but at the same time there's trucks everywhere taking up all the topsoil i don't know what they're doing with it they're so they're moving everything around that's it oh, wow 0.466 all right man we kept driving down the road we got closer and closer and closer to Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Oh, chilling stuff. All the roads are closed off. Just seeing parts of Japan that were completely abandoned, people that could never return to their homes ever again, like. We couldn't even comprehend the scale of the disaster, like it was, it was insane. We didn't know then how radioactive places were, so we didn't want to get out of the car. We were just really spooked and we just drove through it and you could see all the businesses and houses and stuff all fenced off and yeah, I just, I couldn't even, couldn't even begin to comprehend how horrible that must have been for people in that area. We tried to get through there as quickly as possible because you could see all the micro sievert readings on the signs above and I know it probably isn't as dangerous as we thought it was at the time, but I definitely wouldn't want to hang around in some of those areas. Some of the hotspots, we actually drove through them and people can never return to those areas. Saw bags of open, like soil, just like endless. I, don't, I have no idea what they're going to do with all that stuff. There's a huge cleanup operation. We saw endless dump trucks and all sorts of stuff, but uh, yeah, that was an experience and a half. Yeah, some of those people are never going to be able to return and it's a very tragic, devastating situation and yeah, I didn't think we were going to do that on this journey. Just to see the other side of Japan and how unpredictable nature is and how like all that lovely stuff, that peaceful, you know, gorgeous scenery can be tampered and just like tainted and destroyed forever by a, by a nuclear reactor and a, a tsunami and a disaster. It was definitely Something I won't forget anytime soon. 20 minutes outside of the exclusion zone then, it's like it never happened. We were just standing outside of 7-Eleven just drinking a Coca-Cola and just going, wow, cool. We just went one kilometer past the reactor and everything's okay. What a, what a mad experience. We're just outside the exclusion zone at a 7-Eleven. Yeah. This used to be inside the exclusion zone, but uh, yeah, they've let people move back here. Pretty normal here, but 
abnormal at the same time. Yeah. We were just driving somewhere and there's just shit on the side of the road. A lot of GTRs. Common enough thing that we've noticed. Shop we've never heard of. Reverse design Mew. This is great. That evening we just tried to cheer ourselves up, we drove down to Enstyle. We made great friends with the guys at Enstyle. They gave us a great reception the first time we were there and we've uh, kept up relations since and uh, just a really cool shop. We went out of our way to visit them the first time so I think they were really happy that we visited them. The lads actually invited us to their place and they personally invited us to the BM Cup event which was on before we had even left Ireland. They said, you have to come, please come be our guests. So we went to Enstyle, got a great reception again. Language barrier, doesn't matter. Cars is just a universal language. What a tank. I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> like the last time. Thank you very much. Thank you.
such a cool truck. World setup on it, like. Yeah, you wouldn't want to like press it in your pocket, actually, would you? No. You'd just throw it out and have another car. They're so cool, they just have all these cars, they just do whatever they want, they build whatever they want, they just don't care, like there's no rules with them. They're, they welcomed us with open arms the first year and this time around they gave Ruben over fenders, they bought us stuff from the vending machine, they were loading the cars up for the Battle Magazine Cup which they were going to the next day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you! <laughs> Okay, okay. Japanese omotenashi. I will put it in my suitcase. Yeah. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the plane. Carry on the plane. Pack it. Yeah. Hey, Ruben's sweating now, finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So he gave me uh, a set of arches for for the laurel and he said these are free and I was like wow I can't take these as a gift and he said no please you are my friend take these this is a gift and the next day when we went to BM Cup he came he found me again and then he gave me another two arches because he only had two in the workshop and my car has four arches so Ruben needs four arches so he came found me and said here so someday I'm going to have in style arches on the laurel. What? 15 range. You stand in there. What the fuck? We'd been chatting with all the guys from uh, CSS. Well, I had been chatting to them online and I didn't know that they'd kind of split apart and they weren't really hanging around with each other anymore. So, number one crazy street guy style guy, the main guy and the guy with the red 180SX had agreed to meet up with us and we were exhausted because we'd been up the night before with Chogo and we'd gotten no sleep and we were really close to just calling them and telling them hey look man we're too tired we're not we don't really want to do this but we realized that we'd come to Japan to do this be tired when you're back in Ireland let's just go hell for leather and just even if it like nearly kills us but uh, yeah it was probably the best decision we ever made on the whole trip We're back. Back with CSS. You were in this 180 yeah. three years ago? Three years, yeah. Three years ago, yeah. He still has it. He still has it. Still, still has, has the car. It looks pretty similar to how it did. A few skids between yeah. now. It's pretty cool to see that this car is still intact, still drifted, still here. In a place like Japan, I guess, you would imagine that they change cars a lot, but uh, yeah. It looks quite similar. It's great. I couldn't believe it. He still had the red 180 that was in the last video. It looked 
basically the exact same. And um, after a brief chat with the lads, they told us to follow him and uh, we followed him to a petrol station. They filled up and then it was just like the last video, following him up the mountains. And then we started getting excited again. We were going forever. We drove up one mountain, drove down another mountain. It was like up and down. And then eventually then we, two cars came up behind us, two skylines. And we were like, right, something's happening. We had no idea what this was going to be. We were just literally winging it with these lads. And eventually we came down around the corner and a couple of cars drove up past us. I was like, right, maybe this is the spot. There's tire marks everywhere. And then we drove around the corner and holy shit, it was probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Oh shit, like, we just park here and we go down a bit further. Ooh, hello. And then it's us and see. What the fuck, lads? This is big. Yeah. I don't actually even know to be honest, there's a car park. Holy fuck. And we could see a couple of more cars and then we just drove down, 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 down into this little valley in the middle of nowhere. And then just on the left hand side, I just looked, looked into this car park. There must have been 40 or 50 cars, all the shit we drew over. like street drift there was a paddock there there was music there was people changing tires it was the middle of the night and i was i lit i said lads we've hit the fucking jackpot This existed anymore. Yeah, well, we kind of hoped it did, but like. But we didn't think this trip would get any better. Yeah, and uh, this is like this has to be like the epicenter of what's going on. But yeah. This is, it, yeah, this is uh, ground zero. Ground zero. Yeah. C34.
there was a big oil spillage. We ended up helping people sweep up the track. There was a great like atmosphere, sense of community. Everybody's out sweeping. Every up. single person is here helping clean it up. So the road comes out over itself and then goes back in and this one is the exact same. Japan. We thought we had enough for Japan but it just kept giving. This was like something out of a 90s VHS. This is why we're here. Like oh, I did not think we would ever get to experience this volume of cars drifting up like proper up in the middle of nowhere in the mountains of Japan.
standing in the in the, in the trees when you're on this this road and and the cars are drifting or it was it was actually kind of scary because the two lads were in cars drifting and it was just like all right just wait there and film something or do something and watch this all kind of unfold you know and yeah it was it was meant you, you were frightened but you weren't because you're watching like the best thing ever like this was meant to be a night where we were going to like stay in a hotel room and not go up here and it ended up being probably one of the best nights of like the whole trip it was like a convertible thing the lads having the best crack in it and they had the big bozo style exhaust and every time he'd drift past like these things were smacking the trees and he kept spinning and just ripping branches off the trees and like i was standing in these trees and this was happening and it was just the most mental thing ever like train after train all sorts of cars everyone having fun everybody just good vibes good times it was just such a lovely experience a lot of them were quite young as well so we realized that this stuff is still going on it's just a bit harder to find you know it's not as obvious as you see in all those old drift videos from back in the day in the mountains we wanted to see if like the culture the heart the, the pulse is still beating with the culture and i guess it is like tandem after tandem and like looking up at the mountains and seeing just like fog rolling in and headlights of cars and smoke and like the roads kind of like came back on themselves and, and like they you could stand in under the fucking roads it was nuts there was just cars everywhere they'd given us one of the greatest experiences of our lives and Chogo had given us another one the night before like we met these lads by pure chance in 2016 and then like to re like sync up with these lads just like by pure chance again and just head up the mountains and see some of the best drifting we'd ever seen in our whole lives. Yeah, that was, I mean, that's something I would have dreamed of doing my entire life, having an interest in Japanese car culture and drifting, is to see it on that level up the mountains. And to know it still happens is just like reassuring. Yeah. And I hope it continues.
speechless, man. This is like... The sound, like... It's a hurricane anyway, and uh, we're up here in the Tokyo. 